China study author Colin Campbell slaps down critic. That's the name of this article that I found on VegSource the other day. And um, apparently it's been up since 2010, but I didn't know about it. I just discovered it. And I read it, and it's excellent. It is Dr. Colin Campbell's rebuttal to Denise Minger. And I'm going to try to summarize it for you real quick. Dr. Campbell, he starts out his uh, rebuttal with the subject of biological plausibility. And this is something that Denise Minger's um, critique completely lacks. And um, basically, biological plausibility is um, when you have some sort of background, some sort of preliminary studies that have already led you to a conclusion to base your new hypothesis upon, if that makes sense. Um, so in the case of the China study, earlier laboratory work extensively published in the very best peer-reviewed journals preceded the survey in China. These findings established the essence of biological plausibility. One of the most important pillars establishing the reliability of ep epidemiological research. So when Dr. Campbell and his colleagues were doing their laboratory research, the hypotheses that they based that research on um, came from preliminary studies, studies that had been done um, previous to their study and had been published in peer-reviewed journals. They had established biological plausibility before they proceeded. That's something that Denise Minger didn't know about, apparently, and she didn't do that in her critique at all. So in her attempts to discredit Dr. Campbell in the China study, Denise points out that she's discovered this correlation between wheat flour consumption and cardiovascular diseases, heart diseases. And um, she goes on to say that Dr. Campbell intentionally ignored this correlation because of his biases against meat. Furthermore, she goes on to falsely claim that none of these correlations the correlations between wheat flour consumption and heart diseases appear to be tangled with any risk heightening variables. Dr. Campbell points out that there are at least four risk heightening variables um, that correlate with higher wheat flour consumption. The first, um, lower green vegetable consumption. Uh, the second, lower serum levels of monounsaturated fats, possibly increasing the risk of heart disease. Um, third, higher serum levels of urea, a biomarker for protein consumption. Um, and then fourth, greater body weight. Um, again, higher risk of heart disease. Fat people tend to have heart attacks and things more than skinny people do. Um, so yeah. So Dr. Campbell, being a gentleman and a scholar, gives Denise the benefit of the doubt. He um, doesn't accuse her of intentionally overlooking um, these pretty apparent variables, and he moves on to the next um, claim made against him, which is that he intentionally left out the Tule County data because he didn't agree with the findings. The reason Dr. Campbell left out the Tule County data is because these people are nomadic. Their diet changes throughout the year. They can't be classified as um, a high vegetable consuming population or a high meat consuming population. It changes depending on the season depending on where they live at the time. Apparently on Denise's blog, um, a professional epidemiologist had looked through the work that she had done and the critique that she had made and wasn't very satisfied. And she or he left a rebuttal of Denise on her blog and it mysteriously disappeared. And in this critique, um, she or he essentially says that um, her analysis was oversimplified and at best preliminary um, and is quite irresponsible uh, to draw such conclusions based on these uh, these preliminary results alone. Um, essentially saying that Denise doesn't know what she's doing when it comes to epidemiological research. She's just kind of drawing um, her conclusions, her hypotheses out of thin air. They have no biological plausibility and he even suggests um, or she suggests a, um, some books and things for her to read and even offers to help teach her how to do proper analysis. Um, but of course, the post disappeared. So, so in summary, um, Dr. Campbell closes out his rebuttal and I'm just going to read what he wrote because he's, uh, he writes it better than I can say it. Uh, Denise is randomly inferring causality without adjusting 
for confounding factors. Without scanning the variables for analytical authenticity and without prior evidence of biological plausibility for such hypotheses. Um, Denise fails to note the broader implications of choosing the right dietary lifestyle. Um, and this is him quote, quoting him again. I should conclude by noting the suggestion of the professional epidemiologist cited above who suggested that ultimately Denise may wish to publish her findings in a peer-reviewed journal but who presently felt strongly that the current version would not be accepted and I concur. So there you have it. That is China study author Colin Campbell slaps down critic in a nutshell. For a more thorough explanation of um, Denise's claims and um, fallacies, check out Primitive Nutrition's channel. Um, the series that he did on the China study, number 61 through uh, 63 or 64, I believe. Um, I will post a link down below this video for you to click on. And um, He did a much more professional and thorough analysis than I did. And um, Also, check out the article if you're interested. I'll post that down below as well. Until um, next time, take care.